Greetings, Trinity Lutheran Church, the community of Blue Earth, and all those joining us at home. Some news in the body of Christ and some announcements before we gather for worship. First, the flowers gracing our chancel this service are from the services of Terry Mickelson. Terry passed on Friday and his services were held Tuesday of this week. And so we remember his family and friends in our prayers. Also, some other announcements to share with you. Dave Kittleson is uh, kind of leading the charge with several things with the fair stand, including the sign-up list. And so the sign-up list, if you wish to serve um, on our fair, at our fair stand and help serve the public as Trinity Lutheran Church, that is here at Trinity. And we can get you signed up and also share the differences between how our fair stand may look this year and previous years. Also, day camp is starting up July 12th through 15th, and we are in need of some more volunteers. So if you are willing to give of your time or know someone who can, please be in touch with our church office and with Sheila, Sheila Hanke, our education coordinator. We are also in need of some supplies for day camp. We are looking for shoe boxes and bottle caps. So if you have shoe boxes and bottle caps around, please let us know. They can be brought to church. Um, we're looking for about eight shoe boxes and bottle caps as well, in addition to the eight shoe boxes. So please, if you are able to assist us with those supplies, please do so. Our COVID task force met and for our in-person services, we will be adding more congregational singing, as well as the opportunity to have communion around the rail or in your pew, wherever you feel comfortable. Other announcements include that we are doing a worship survey. For those of you who partake in our BevCom services and our services online, we would like to hear from you about what you appreciate about our worship services. The survey is available either via email, via paper copy through the church, um, and also through a QR code if you have a smartphone. Please let us know if you'd like to take the survey and have yet to receive one. It will be included in your July newsletter. Our hope is to gather all those responses by July 10th. And if some trickle in a little bit later, that's okay too. But we want to hear from you what you appreciate, whether it's the music, the graphics, the variety of voices, um, so that we can invest in equipment and resources and know what to plan for the time ahead. So if you have partaken in our online services, our BevCom services, or know someone who has, please be in touch with us. Even a note to the church sent to the church um, would be sufficient for us to gather information. So thank you for supporting the ministry of Trinity in this way. Let us gather for worship. This past Sunday, Trinity had the baptism of Easton Michael Stittman. And so as we recognize the young among us who are getting baptized, we also take time to remember our baptism. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. By the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. 
by your water and the word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heir of your promise as servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. At this time, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead as a remembrance of your baptism. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 123, and I invite you to join in the bold portion. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of her mistress, Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich. I'd like to share with you something that was shared with me and a group of colleagues um, this week. And it's about a cup and having a cup full. Now, if you had a cup and someone said, would you like a glass of water? It was maybe not quite as nice as it was today. It was much warmer. And oh, a nice cold cup of water sounds awesome. And someone fills your cup. That would be great. But then what if someone came along and offered you ice cold pink lemonade? That sounds great too, right? So you say, sure, but there might be an issue here, right? Any wonderings about what the problem might be? <laughs> I don't know if I would want to drink that. In our gospel reading this evening, whoop, I got cleanup to do later. In our gospel reading this evening, Jesus sends the disciples out, but he asks them to only bring certain things. They were asked to leave a money bag and an extra tunic to leave those things behind because he wanted the disciples as they went out to receive the hospitality of others and to be in relationship with the people they encountered. Now, if I had taken this cup with a glass of water, drank the water, and there was space for the lemonade, well, that lemonade would taste delicious. That'd be lovely. And the same is true in our lives as disciples. We need to create space for the good things that God gives to us. Space for change, space to grow, space to look at things differently. In our gospel reading, the, the religious leaders hear Jesus speaking, and they're like, who is this? This is the son of Mary, isn't it? This is the carpenter. They didn't have space in their minds to wonder who else Jesus could be. And so as we go through our week, I think sometimes we get stuck in those places too where we don't have space to think about things differently, or we don't have space to offer care to someone, or we don't have space to receive care. And yet God gives us the ability to leave some things behind, to let go of some things in order to receive those things of God and also to open up our hands and give freely. So I invite you to be on the lookout for that possibility in your week. Let us pray. 
Dear God, we give you thanks that we are sent out as your disciples. Help us in our lives to create space for you. In the places where we struggle, where things are hard, help us to figure out a way to to make space to see your presence with us in it. Give us good courage. Help us in all that we need, that we may drink from the living water you give, and it may give us joy. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is what I tell my husband, Dan, when we head out for a trip. I can pack two ways. I can pack fast, or I can pack well. Now, I don't know if you do packing the way I do, but well, packing well means that I have exactly what I need. It's folded. It's organized. There's not a bunch of different extra shoes or outfits. I've decided what I am bringing and I don't bring any of the extra stuff. I've remembered the phone charger. I actually brought my own toothpaste. Packing well means things are in its place and I'm prepared. Packing fast means that Dan has some of my stuff in his stuff because it didn't fit in my suitcase. He also has to remember to hang up, not only pack the trunk with the numerous amount of things I'm bringing, but hang up the things in the back seat that didn't quite get dry enough to go into the suitcase. And they'll dry out in the sunshine once we reach our destination. In our gospel, 
Jesus sends the disciple and he tells them what to and more so what not to pack. He sends them out intentionally with directions intentionally to carry his power and his word and his healing to others. And the gospel of Mark is a gospel of intention. It's the shortest gospel we have. Jesus heals the sick, cures the demon-possessed. He travels to synagogues, the centers of Judaism. Then he hops in the boat and goes to the other side where people don't really know Judaism at all. The Gentiles, the people that eat differently, worship differently, and hangs out with them too. Here is a show me Jesus where it's the outsiders, the ill, the oppressed, who get who Jesus is. And the ones seeped in scripture, the ones who are at the synagogue, they're the ones with the questions. Who is this man? Where did his power come from? Isn't this Mary's boy? And our reading says they took offense at him. But the Greek literally says they were scandalized by Jesus. Now, I think it's interesting that they speak of his deeds of power. How could these deeds of power be done with his hands? And then they bring up what they think he should be doing with his hands. Is this not the carpenter? Where there could be faith, there's flapping tongues. Where there could be inquiry and leaning in and saying, hey, Jesus, we don't quite get it. Jesus gets an inquisition. Jesus does not heal many there. Instead, he sends his disciples out intentionally with specific instructions. Their guidance is to carry no bread, no bag, no money, no second tunic, just a staff and sandals. And that would have sounded familiar to other disciples of other teachers in that era who would send out their disciples with very little so that they would develop relationships of interdependence and receiving and giving of hospitality. The disciples would have to rely on the hospitality of others, the welcome of others, and then trust that what Jesus had sent with them, the power of God, the ability to heal, would be enough to sustain. It would create relationships between everyone they meet because they would have to ask for things, for good or for ill. They'd have to see what each other had to offer. Trust that people would care. This week, and as July begins, even as we tell the story of our independence in this country, we recognize that our country's making was not an individual endeavor. Groups of people had to work together and rely on one another. It was not just one individual or the accomplishment, separate accomplishments of individuals, but groups of people joining together for a purpose. With give and take, messy and often not fair to various peoples, as we know was the case with slavery and what happened to the native peoples of this land. We know parts of our country were created on the backs and lives of others. And so here in this time when we're reminded of independence, we have a gospel reading about interdependence. The disciples were sent out with less than what they would normally have, and they had to shed some of their comforts and perhaps even their expectations. Jesus spoke in the synagogue, but then right after that, he sends the disciples to households. Christ's healing is not bound by a sacred space or done by people considered to be the holy people by the ones in charge but through the opening of their hands, the shedding of the extra things, there was space for many to be healed. As I read this text, I reflected on what Trinity has given up in years past. This is not the original sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church, but there was discernment and a decision made, a difficult decision made, that there would be renewal that there would be something built that was more accessible and perhaps met the needs better of the group worshiping there. And as we come into July and think about the fair, I think about when the tree fell 
and the stories I heard about the discernment of what were we going to do? Were we going to rebuild? Were we going to take the insurance money? What part did that have in our ministry and life together? And even now in this year, we've had to discern how to do the fair stand in this type of climate, in the midst of the unknowns, and still honor our values as a community. We routinely open up our hands and let go of something so that our hands are open to receive. And we are called to do so as Christians in our life of faith. So what about us? What about us as God's people, not just buildings and food? What is in our hands and in our hearts that we need to shed, that we need to open up our grip in order to make space for God's work in us in this particular time? Even when we don't know how it will all turn out. The disciples did not know which house they were going, and they didn't know if it would be friendly or if they'd have to move on. Where do we need to make space in order to make space to receive care from others? And where do we need to make space in order to move as Jesus' disciples in different spaces, in different times, and in different ways? What's needed? What's essential? And what is just taking up space in the luggage we lug around? What do we need to shake off our feet in order to step out into the next thing. And even more so, what messenger might Christ be sending to each of us that we need to be open to hearing in order to experience healing, to know that God's word is for us, God's grace is for us in this time. I am doing some continuing education, and part of that is having a spiritual director so I meet with a pastor each month, and we just talk about what God is up to in my life, in my family life, in my work life, and to, to take time to think about what might God be saying to me and, and what God might be discerning in uh, the weeks and days ahead. And my spiritual director gave me a something called the examine. It's been used for years in the church, but it's a way to reflect upon your day. And the first sentence on that practice says, as you look back on the day you've had, look back and ask for God's clarity and understanding. Well, you've already had the day. The day is already done, and yet you're called to look back with asking for God's clarity and understanding. That even in our memories, even in the days that are done, there is space for God to work and speak with us. Space for God's movement, even in a day that is finished. Whether you feel like you are traveling or you're the one receiving the guests, maybe you're packing fast or packing well, may we as God's people do so with intention, knowing that God's intention is to send us out carrying the promise of God's healing and care wherever we go, with the promise that we can make space for God's work in us. Amen.
Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy, and for all of the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in your midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear and bring wholeness to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries. Equip us, equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks that in every time and place, you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
receive the blessing, the blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us, who journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank mm-hmm. you.